from his luxury York penthouse flat, Victor Lewis hyphen comma, a man described by Mensa as having the combined intellect of Annabelle Croft and the woman in the shaken vac commercial. <laughs> and now, as usual, I set up for Victor a venerable joke. Thanks, Ned. And I deliver the punchline. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. It's Thursday evening, and I find myself backstage with the splendid gentleman of press at a concert given by the popular transatlantic crooner, a certain Mr. Stephen Wonder, on behalf of BBC Radio Ipswich. I subject him to a penetrating interview. Right, well, that deals with your favourite colour, Mr. Wonder. Okay. Could you therefore tell our Ipswich audience what is it like being born blind? Well, man, things could be worse. I could be born black. Uh, okay. Uh, look at this, Mr. Wonder. What the hell is that? I show you my latest invention. It's my clockwork Stevie Wonder doll. You wind it up, it spins around around it and bangs into the furniture. Hey, that's cool, isn't it? Uh, why, uh, why don't I sound like Stevie Wonder, man? Well, because I can't impersonate you very well. That's cool. Stevie, finally, on behalf of BBC Local Radio, may I present you with this Braille bank check for a large amount of money? Just feel all those noughts, Stevie. Hey, man, that's real. Yeah. I laugh as Mr. Wonder shreds his fingertips, not on a braille check, but amusingly on a cheese grater. I will not beat about the bush. I enjoy taunting blind people. It is very easy. Just my little joke, Steve. Just a joke. Um, have a can of pate. Hey, thanks, man. It's very good pate. We sighted British people call it kitty cat. Hmm, that's good. I've become bitter and twisted as a result of working for many years in BBC Local Radio. Why has local radio distorted my personality? Let me explain in parochial terms. <laughs> BBC Local Radio is intensely drab, monotonous, and lackluster. It is so thoroughly vacuous and dismal that it almost bears comparison with Ipswich. Positive things to say about Ipswich number 9B. The only major improvement to Ipswich over the past 50 years involved 10,000 tons of TNT and came courtesy of the Luftwaffe. And we say more of the same, please, Mr. Gurry. Saying the phrase local radio is a misnomer, since 80% of what is broadcast is repulsive pop music, which is identical on every local radio station. The disc jockeys, who all talk through their noses and sound like they've had their adenoids put in, constantly forget which station they're working on and only play the jingles to remind themselves where they are. Kylie Minogue, and don't forget the traffic on the B12584324789 is worth avoiding. Bibble bobble. What you're hearing is a recording of a typical local radio disc jockey. Thanks to the miracles of technology, I have inserted a microphone into the space between his ears in order to record his inner most thoughts as he, I use the term loosely, broadcasts. More of Kylie Minogue. Okay, you're listening to... Oh no, I've forgotten where I'm broadcasting from. Uh, you're listening to... BBC Radio Aberfan. Good morning, it's great being back in Scott Island, in Wales. That was a close shave, I wish I was back in Scunthorpe. You're listening to the morning show, my name is... Um... Oh no, what is my name, what's it say on my wrist? Uh, uh, nil by mouth. I know, I'll say okay. Okay. The van's looking great today, isn't it? Watch all these places. Anyway, I'll say you're special people. Hey, hey, listen. You're special people, okay? I like it when my uh, voice goes all deep. Okay. I wish I was working on Radio 1. I only get 30 quid now for this show. I was listening to uh, this next one in my Lamborghini this morning. Remember, all the money goes to charity. So merry, what's the mercy? We are the world. Indeed, with disaster records, all the money does go to charity. But the free publicity would have cost Jerry Marson, who nobody's heard of for 30 years, £10 million in advertising. Yeah. Which is why, to revive my own flagging career, I have decided to make my own disaster record and to get ahead of the market, recording an all-purpose charity song available in your shops just as soon as whatever happens, happens. Long money and save our flagging careers. We are the world. Woo, yes, baby. While I'm recording my disaster song, Mrs. Tribbly goes for a tramp in the woods. Leave me alone, you fat old cow. Oh no, not in the face. Not in the face. One, two, one, two. Ross, could you Meanwhile, back in the studio, standing in between the chorus of Paul McCartney, Kylie Minogue, and Mother Fraser of Calcutta, we pile on the adjectives, or more precisely, the trajectives. Okay, then let's go for a take. Here we go. Wasn't it awful what happened recently? All that death and horror and misery. But good comes from bad because there'll be lots of gruesome pictures on TV and I can look all shocked and sensitive and get lots of free publicity. Because on Monday there are the pictures of the entrails. On Tuesday the papers tell us who to blame. On Wednesday Mrs. Thatcher shakes survivors by the hand in front of the cameras. And on Thursday there's the funeral and hopefully it'll rain. On Friday the working classes are all crying in the streets. Because there's nothing like being near other people's tragedy to make you feel on top of the world more leaves. It's theatrical and sentimental and it doesn't do my career any harm. I... Oh, oh, no. Oh, he's touched, he is. He's touched, you're right. It's trouble with him, he's had no tragedy in his life like me. Right, you, that's right, yeah, have you doll? Morgate train disaster. <gasps> I was on the train going into Morgate, I thought to myself, I've been here 15 years, two months earlier, it would be, it would be curtains. Oh, it would be oh, curtains. It would be curtains. Oh, it would be curtains. Oh, 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 o
Oh, oh, did you pass me? Yeah, I'm afraid I let one go. Oh, dear, not on the radio. Yeah, it's me age. Oh. Michelonic walls have collapsed and my sphincter's not airtight. Right. Oh, dear, let him explain in flatulent terms. <laughs> It is a curious social laboratorial phenomenon that although the odour of one's own back bottom exhalations are a source of endless comfort, amusement and enjoyment, those of other people's are utterly vile and loathsome. Moreover, as Chang Zhu, the eminent Chinese philosopher and co-owner of the Willow Garden Takeaway Ipswich, once expostulated... Ah, it's always the same, John. You sit in row alone for three hours, do nothing for a minute, you drop your gut, in come a beautiful woman, sniff it, look at you like some sort of pervert and walk out. You are the fool, you pay for it. Anyway, oh, I've had it sorted out. I yep. went to see a psychiatrist. Oh, really? Oh, young? Oh, no, not young. He was about, oh, 60. No, Carl Gustav Jung, you're adult that's, you are. That's right. That's, that's his name, Adler. Adler? He said he didn't replace the face organ oh, in the face. You're right. It, it was all organs in the face with him. Oh, he said I had to paint myself all over with gold paint. He did. Oh, doll. Yeah, he did. Never. Yeah, he said I had a guilt complex. Guilt oh. complex. That's right. I went to him. I asked for my money back. Yeah. He suggested I had impropriety with animals. No, I do animals too. Do you want to hear my impression of a pig? Go on, doll. Do right. a pig. Right, he goes, uh, get in the back of the van, you black effing. Oh, B. Oh, no. Black. Oh, no. Get in the back no. of the van. Get in the back of the van. The BBC regrets to announce that the quality of this week's script has deteriorated to such an extent that Mr Lewis Smith has been reduced to purloining old jokes from last week's edition of That's Live. We apologise unreservedly to Mother Ransom of White City. Excuse me, madam. Yes, Excuse me, yes, Mr. Ransom. Oh, hello. Uh, would you rip your bowels out of yourself? Rip my bowels out? Oh, no, I don't do that, dear, no. Well, it's, it's all right, it's all right. It's for that, it's live. There's 40 million people watching, so it must be okay. Oh, I don't care about that. I still don't have written bowels out. Oh, no. Can you do anything else, then? Uh, I could impersonate a pig, dear. Uh, evening all. Get into the back of the van, you black... Next week, Nelly, I'll be reporting from Beijing, where I've just landed the plum job of entertainment software in Tiananmen Square, performing my hilarious stand-up comedy routine in front of 10 million inscrutable oriental students. This is a funny one. Listen to this. Did you know, did you know that chopsticks are one of the main reasons why the Chinese did not invent custard? Everyone a gem. I was in Budapest last week, ladies and gentlemen. Trouble with Hungarian food is 30 minutes late. you feel Chinese? Learned that one from Prince Philip. Good one, isn't it, eh? <laughs> <laughs> to Lewis Smith in his uh, penthouse in, in, in York.